What is up, party people? We have got a full show for you today. Buckle up, lean in, let's get to it. Full studio, we'll do introductions here in a little bit. We are excited to talk about this real estate market because I believe there are opportunities that nobody else is talking about. So let's talk about them. We'll get into it, but we want to take your questions as well. 214-310-0008. That phone number you can call or text right now or any other time throughout the week to speak with us about your real estate needs. You're going to get in touch with someone on the Todd Tremonti home selling team, often the English wonder himself, the Yanni Donnie. Tell him hello. Hey. There it is. Every time with gusto. Uh, hey. So, okay. Go back to normal. Hey. Um, you can Google us. Just Google Todd Tremonti. You can go to ToddTremontiTeam.com or you can call or text that number, 214-310-0008. And we want to help you with your very personal and specific real estate needs. The world of media and business and economic discussions are all very broad, all very general. All the charts and graphs are about the region or the state or the country. But when it comes to you making a decision about your purchase, your sale, your investment, your remodel, your repair, most of those things are not helpful. You need to know what is happening on the ground right here, very locally, your part of your block in your neighborhood and your part of your school district and that's what we can help you with. 214-310-0008 or online at ToddTremontiTeam.com. First segment is brought to you by Patrick Glaros and his team at Cardinal Financial. Uh, if you are looking to get a mortgage, if you are looking to refinance, maybe you're interested in getting a second property, maybe a third, who knows? Reach out to Patrick and his team, patrickglaros.com, G-L-A-R-O-S, patrickglaros.com. You can call him at 972-728-3420, NMLS number 308804, and you can find all of our recommended pros and vendors on the website. Here's the thing. When we recommend someone on the show or we introduce you to someone, we we are very serious about that. Patrick and his wife, Jamie, were at my house this week. We are finishing a huge build project. They are in the middle of one. I kid you not, we gave them all of our tile samples and color swatches and hardware samples. So these are people we know and trust and use personally. Patrick is literally financed every mortgage I've ever had. I've never had a mortgage without Patrick. There's been once or twice I needed a very strange type of financing and he connected me with someone because he didn't do it himself. But the reality is, if we're telling you about someone on this show, it's because we have used them, we trust them. The farthest stretch would be our clients have used them and we're really proud and really happy with them and we would tell you that. So go to ToddTremontiTeam.com, click the radio tab and feel confident I can't promise you that everybody's perfect every day, but you can feel confident that these are people that we have a high level of confidence in. Go to ToddTremontiTeam.com, click the menu, then click radio, and then you'll see contact information for some pretty fantastic folks. Hey, you want to talk about sellers today? I would love to talk about sellers Let's today. Let's have a little chin wag about some sellers then, shall chin we? Chin wag. Knew that I'd get you all not excited. A, not a Cockney rhyming scheme, but a phrase that made sense. Look I at just, that. Knew, knew that would get you all excited. So proud of you, Ian. So it's, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, so there's a couple of things that I want to talk about. Um, we're seeing, there was an article that got sent uh, to me that was talking about sellers adding throw-ins to get yep. buyers enticed. Now, the article was pretty like outlandish things that were getting thrown in. We're talking about- it Depends on the market. I've seen Corvettes included. Well, this one was like, hey, if you buy a $22 million home, you'll get a boat, a Tesla, and a beach club membership. Right. If you buy a $2.8 million home, you'll get a car. If you buy a waterfront home, you'll get a boat. So there's lots of that. now. We do some things to yep. entice buyers on our team. So what yep. can you tell people about what to look for or what to discuss with an agent as you're kind of thinking about this? A couple of things, but a quick thought comes to mind. In proportion to the homes we sell here in Dallas, ours might be a more expensive gift That's that we fair. give. Um, if you sell a home with us, 98 out of 100 times, we offer a cruise to the buyer or buyer's agent as an incentive if they purchase your home. That's something we do for virtually every single seller we work with. It's part of our seven-step proprietary marketing system, which of course has hundreds of sub points. 
If you're interested in how that works or what that looks like, just give us a call, 214-310-0008, or go online to TatraMoneyTeam.com. Now, this is just smart business, by the way. Um, if you go, ooh, let's get producer Courtney on the on the mic here. Courtney, do you ever go to like a spa, like a massage, facial kind of situation? I sure do. I thought you might. Now, Full price. Are some of... Do, do, like, do they do any quote unquote extras, right? So you go in, you pay whatever the price is for a facial. Do they do like snacks or drinks or extra? Yeah, there's like a chocolate on the pillow. Mm-hmm. There's always like a, an extra little zhuzh. Zhuzh. To and, and is that- Enhance the experience. Right. And does it matter to you? Would you go to a spa that does that versus one that doesn't? Would you be less likely to come back if they didn't do that? I, no, but- it just adds to it. It makes it so much more enjoyable. Okay, I believe the answer is yes, based on the way your eyes responded to that question, but your words said no. And I, I trust you. Well, I see what you're saying. I The little extras add to me wanting to be there. Yeah, and your memory and the feeling you have Absolutely. when you're in that space. So that's just a random example that other businesses do this, right? Literally, you know, the mint on or the chocolate on the pillow at the hotel uh, you know the haircut it's really lost its thing I, I I cannot remember the last time I got a chocolate on a pillow at a hotel right I used to I'm love I'm sure that. someone complained about it or choked it ate it with the wrapper you know just the world used to be so world's glorious. getting dumber um, you ever go to a haircut place and they're like hey grab a drink and you're like sure. oh cool it's a 72 cent drink but that's a nice touch yeah. the place I go has a refrigerator it's got drinks in it all that all that is the same exact concept we're talking about here, except the haircut is a 20 or $30 investment. The spa is a hundred dollar thing. And the house is 200 to 22 million, you know, whatever. But it's the same concept. The reality is we are now entering a market. And I think we're gonna address this later in the show where people selling homes are back to offering some incentives to buyers, as opposed to having this very cocky, overly confident attitude of like, you can beg me to buy my house. I'm not offering you an incentive. And that is really a broad uh, commentary about how the real estate market has changed geographically from a financial perspective. And certainly things act a little differently in different price ranges and areas. But I believe those incentives are smart. And I believe that even in a market where sellers don't need to do that, They should, and we can talk more about that if you want. Goosehead Insurance is where I go and talk to DP Lambert to figure out what I'm getting, if I'm getting the best home insurance, auto insurance, if I'm getting the best coverage for the best price. DP.Lambert, L-A-M-B-E-R-T, DP.Lambert at goosehead.com. You can call him at 214-614-8595. I just know for me over the years, he saved me thousands of dollars. Same, same. And right now he's acknowledging like, hey, this is not the best time in the world of insurance, but we're going to make sure we get you the but absolute best But he just saved me 1880 something bucks. It's awesome. DP.Lambert at goosehead.com. Go to toddtramoneyteam.com, click the radio tab, and you can find all the recommended pros and vendors right there. So another article that kind of goes along, I think, with what we were just talking about, about offering incentives, the headline here is that the the housing market prices are more unaffordable than ever in 99% of US counties. And when you read into the article, it's saying, hey, for the average American earner, the cost of living, the cost of owning a home has far outsurpassed the level of income that that individual or family is bringing in and now it's just making it unaffordable. Yeah, to oversimplify that, over uh, unaffordable is just their interpretation of the data. The data says in 99% of counties in the United States, the percentage of your income that would have to be allocated to a home if you owned a a typical average home uh, is more than they would deem to be affordable. Mm -hmm. So- There's a lot of words in there that could be defined different ways. But basically what they're saying is houses cost more of your income than ever before. Home prices are outpacing wages. Yep. So home value growth has grown way faster than wage growth. Now, obviously, these are general statistics based on averages. I would read into this data further and I would say this. Sadly, homeownership is becoming a, an opportunity of 
couple of groups, groups that are wealthier and groups that are willing to make some compromises. Now, I don't think that's the worst thing that's ever happened. I think if homeownership is something that only the wealthiest people can afford, that's a serious problem. The United States has been known as, you know, a leader in the global community of a place where homeownership is a part of the dream. It's a, it's accessible to many, many people. Part of that though, part of that widening gap is a sense of entitlement that people are supposed to be able to buy a home that has every single thing they could ever want. We've been through a period of unbelievably a low cost debt and affordable building. So your first home could be a three bedroom, two bath, 2000 square foot home on a quarter acre lot. The first place I lived was a storage unit. And if you want to hear about it, go check our YouTube channel. The first home I owned was a disgusting foreclosure, split level, kind of weird, quirky house that we made great. The second place was a nasty foreclosure that we made better. Um, and the third one was worse than the first two. But the reality is we've had a generation-ish of homeowners that were able to move into homes that they were really proud of, as is right away. And that's moved away from us because of what you're talking about. Wages have not kept up with housing costs. Yeah, I mean, another part of the article uh, goes on to talk about the debt to income ratio and talks about how common lending is about 28% debt, yep. to, ra debt to income ratio. Mm -hmm. Right now, on average, we're about 35%. So yeah. it's the highest level since 2007. And only back two years ago in 2021, it was at 21%. That's a massive well, income American uh, increase. Debt levels for Americans got down as low as they had been in a long, long time, four or five years ago. So those were unusually low yeah. and were back to uncomfortably high. The reality is this, and I'll just speak for Dallas-Fort Worth because these are this is national yep. data. If you're in Dallas-Fort Worth, I've been warning you about this for years now that home ownership in Dallas-Fort Worth is moving towards the coastal model, right? Think New York, think beautiful coast of Florida, think California, where it's been normal for a long time. If you if you buy a property in New York City, you're like, how small is it, right? It, the caricature of that is you have a 292 square foot apartment where you have to fold your bed up into the wall to have a living room, or there's nine people packed into an apartment to buy a house in California costs 10 times as much as Texas. Those are things that people have known for a long time. Well, the point is areas like DFW are not, we're still nowhere near that, but we are closer to that than ever before, where your house is gonna cost more of your income like someone in New York or LA or San Diego or San Francisco. Again, we are not all the way to that extreme, but we, are, we have moved in that direction. Affordability, we used to be so much cheaper now we're cheaper, but not as much as it used to be. So the point is, I think that trend will continue. And I think the longer people wait to buy real estate in DFW, even if the rates aren't ideal, the more they're going to run into that of like, golly, this is just, I cannot do other things if I own a home. I think it's fair to say we've definitely seen an increase in, in people that are in home buyers that are saying, hey, you know what? I just don't think that the rates are going to come back down to where I, I wanted them to be. So yep. let's just do it. Like, let's just go ahead and, and buy. And, and if yep. we need to refinance at some point, let's go ahead and do that. But what we're also seeing is, and we've talked about this before, you know, a number of times over the years that kind of Frisco is, is almost going to be like the center of DFW, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe even a little further north because that's where the quote affordability is, is yep. as you move further north and now you're getting to, you know, Dallas from where people live in could be 90 minutes yep. because of traffic. And well, things like I, I that. grew up my younger years in Northwest Houston where my address was Houston and I was 45 plus minutes North of downtown. That's just the top half. Yeah. So Dallas is different. Dallas basically ends at 635, and then all of a sudden you have Richardson and then Plano and then out. You know, you've got all these different cities where Houston just swallowed them all up, but it's going to feel the same. Right. Yeah, and, well, I, and I mean like downtown Dallas, because that's yeah. why people like the Mavs have been rumored to like, hey, maybe we need to move further north because right. that's where more and more people are living now. Yeah. And it's just it's harder to get people down. And I think the summary statement of all of this is we don't think this progress is going to stop. We don't think affordability of housing in North Texas is going to come down much, if at all. Um, we don't think waiting to buy a house outside of your personal budget issues. Like if it's not responsible right now, then don't do that. But strategically, we believe this trend will continue. 
that owning real estate, owning a home is going to be just a larger portion of your investable assets, of your income, of your dollars than it used to be. And we don't think we're going back to $150,000 starter homes at 2.8% rates. I would imagine someday we'll be back someday in this next generation of home buyers, we, we, we could be debt back in the 5% range of interest rates, but I don't think we're going to see homes that people are really excited about buying in popular suburbs in the one or two hundreds ever again. Yeah. I mean, we just had Patrick on the show recently and he kind of said, Hey, look, this isn't, you know, gospel. This isn't exactly what I'm, is going to happen. But if I was to look at the data and the trends and things like that, it's not unreasonable to say that right now we're at seven, seven and a quarter. It's not unreasonable to say we might be at six and three quarters by the end of the year. Right. Maybe you know halfway through next year we could be in the low sixes. But that's not enough to say to say, for somebody to say, hey, let's just hold off until we get to six point five. I mean, right. like you're missing out on opportunities because as those as that, that rates begin to fall, more people are going to be off the thinking oh of, my let's go, let's go, let's go. And it's like, oh, now you're going to have to when, overpay. When we were at five and a half, six and a half looked disgusting. Yeah. But at seven and a half, six and a half looks really good. Right. And that's the world, that's, that's where we are now. So I, people are sick of talking about interest yeah. rates. But the reality is what we are saying is that the relative cost of home ownership has gone up in North Texas and I don't see it coming down. So- Prepare accordingly. Give us a call, 214-310-0008. We can help you talk through your timeline, your strategy. Should you rent? Should you buy? Should you stay where you are? Should you upsize? Should you downsize? Should you invest? Should you buy a house now so your kids can afford one 15, 20, 30 years from now? Should you build? Let's just have the conversation now. You can never start that conversation too early, but so many people, the vast majority of people wait too late to start that conversation. And by waiting too late, they lose a lot of their options and they get forced into some impulsive, dangerous, costly decision-making. Give us a call, 214-310-0008. By the way, I'm serious. Don't wait. We would love to help you, whether you're ready now or not. 214-310-0008, call or text. Or go online to toddtremonteteam.com. If you forget all of that, just Google Todd Tremonti, spell it as best you can. You can see over 700 reviews. Click any button, call any number, fill out any form. We'll be happy to help you in whatever way is best for you. Every time we meet with a seller and every time a seller and others decide to work together, uh, that home gets covered by Super Home Warranty, mm -hmm. home warranty company, super, hello, super com. They make sure that if something was to go wrong with the home before it goes on the market, that we have a way to be able to get things covered and fixed and make it really, really simple. We also advocate for every single one of our buyers to get a home warranty. And we really recommend Super. HelloSuper.com. Christine over there can take great care of you. You can go to HelloSuper.com where you can find out all the information. You can see everything that they offer uh, as you're thinking about getting a home warranty. Listen, sleeping at night is important and people sleep better at night when they know there's a little bit of backup if something goes wrong. A home warranty will help you with that. The right amount of insurance will help you with that. Access to trusted vendors and people who can take care of things in a trustworthy manner will help you with that. And going to toddtremonteteam.com, clicking on that radio tab and getting access to our pros and vendors that we trust that we've worked with before um, will help you sleep better at night. It's It really is that simple. You know what else makes me sleep better at night, Todd? I have a few guesses, but I'm not going to say them live on air. When Middlesbrough win, and we've won four in a row, Todd. We haven't talked about the Borough recently. That's the Borough. That's the Borough. We've been bad, but the last couple of weeks has been good. Yeah! Could well, be going up this year. We're 16th John, already. Well, John, well, John loves it. We were bottom of the league two weeks ago. <laughs> I thought 16th. it might be bourbon, but I, you know, just we'll stick with the Borough. Or All right. Is. If you have questions, give us a call. Shoot us a text, 214-310-0008. If you miss any of this show, you need, need, need to check out the podcast. Anywhere you get podcasts, you're looking for DFW Real Estate Weekly, DFW Real Estate Weekly with Todd Tremonti. Check out the YouTube channel. You can access all of that through the website at toddtremontiteam.com. Why is a headline that we always see something about the real estate market is going to crash? Because it gets eyeballs. That is the, that's literally the answer. Like the people whose entire business models revolve around doom and gloom do well. It's, it's a sad scenario. 
that human psychology says people are drawn to and pay more attention to negatives and fears and concerns than they do excitement and joy and heartwarming stories. The, the news leads with burning buildings and it wraps up with kittens being rescued from trees, right? They grab your attention with fear and anxiety and horrible stuff. And then they put you to bed with a nice heartwarming story because everybody's already bailed out on the program. It's sad, but it's the reality. So the headline that gets the most attention, the things that sells the most accounts in newsletters are protect yourself from doom. The economy is going to crash. Rates are going to 12. Inflation's going to 13%. Like those are the things that get people's attention. There are entire TV programs. There are entire networks. There are entire YouTube channels. There are, there are, there are um, it's everything, right? I mean, movie. I mean, you yeah. just look at movies. It's always like bad at the beginning. We need the hero saved at the end. Right. Now that's the story of life and salvation in my opinion, but here's the here's the re that is these are the reasons that you will hear way more bad news than good. Our goal on this show is not to be a source of good news versus bad. It's to be a source of what's actually happening. What's true, what is helpful to you, what you should be weary of, uh, to caution you against some poor decision making and some pain, and if if you need a real estate pro to potentially earn that trust from you and then have a full on representation responsibility, which we would call a fiduciary responsibility to put your needs above our own. But the show, our service to our community is to add value, advocate for you, protect you. And then of course, maybe somewhere down the road, we earn your business to help you buy or sell a home. But what you've got to do for yourself is you've got to be a discerning, thoughtful consumer of information. And when you hear all these doom and gloom headlines, you don't always run away and just uh, ignore them and think positive thoughts, but you have to go, okay, who's the source and why are they putting that information out there? Are they trying to help me? Are they thinking about me at all? Or what is their goal? And most of the time, the goal is clicks, views, listens, and revenue. If you haven't checked out your home valuation recently, go to toddtramoneyteam.com, click the home valuation tab. In less than one minute, you can find out what your home would sell for, what your home would rent for. You can find out about getting a cash offer. You can see how much equity you have. There's so many tools that can happen within there. toddtramoneyteam.com, click the home valuation tab. Let me just double down on that because if you're even remotely curious, what would somebody pay me for my house right now? You should do that. Go to toddtramoneyteam.com, click the home valuation tab. You can request a cash offer and get one within a couple of days. If you're thinking about selling your home and you just want to use that as a baseline to compare against what the open market might generate, we can get you both of those numbers, a cash offer number and what we believe we could sell it for with our seven-step proprietary marketing program where we guarantee to sell your home over the average price and under the average time. All of that is provided by the Todd Tremonti Home Selling Team at toddtremontiteam.com. Welcome back, welcome back, party people. The English Wonder had to escape the studio for a very important meeting, but he has been replaced, and I would say it could even be an upgrade. We have got producer intern Phoenix in studio with a microphone, and we are about to get to it welcome to the show once more phoenix the intern hello there it is it, verbose is what they call them these days wordy is what we used to say all right folks we've got plenty of show for you today talking about uh some opportunities as we head into the fourth quarter for dfw home buyers sellers and owners also just wanted to remind you that if you could not tell me right now what your house is worth you're missing out on some key information that would help you sleep a little bit better at night, build wealth, and operate uh, in a complex world. Go to toddtremontiteam.com and click that home valuation tab on the very front page, top middle. You can find out what your home would sell for. You can find out what your home equity is, and you can track it month in and month out. You can even request a cash offer, and if you're thinking about selling, you could ask us to compare that for you with what we believe the open market could get for your home. And we will gladly do that for you at no charge whatsoever. Toddtramoneyteam.com. Click the home valuation tab at the top of the page. Listen, I just want to cut in really quickly because the people want to know if they can still buy or sell before the holidays. 
I feel stressed. Like we are in, like Halloween is looming. Phoenix. She started with listen, and so I did. I just sat, mm -hmm. and I didn't talk. I just listened. And then she started talking about some stress and anxiety, and I felt like I, that was the time I'm supposed to speak up, but I don't know yet because she started with listen, and it was very authoritative. Do you think, think we should talk now? Now's the time. Okay, okay. She didn't want you to answer, but I do. Do you, do you think we should talk now? Well, you heard her. Let's talk. Okay. I say we just take our cues. Okay. Um, this is the time of the year, believe it or not, where the holidays absolutely matter, and they are a benchmark calendar scheduling item for real estate. The reason for that is, let's say you decided to sell your house today, in still early do early October, um, we might need a week or two, maybe three, depending on what you've got going on in your property to get your house ready for the market. And then right now, it's a wise situation to think it could take 30-ish days to sell your home. Now, we're selling homes in days still, but others are taking a little bit longer. Um, uh, unique properties, certain areas, certain price points, that kind of thing. So then you would already be at Thanksgiving mid to late November. While well, Thanksgiving is one of those holidays people don't really like to be moving right before or during or sometimes even shortly after. And then everything between Thanksgiving and Christmas is chaotic. Doesn't mean it's not a great time to buy and sell. As a matter of fact, we've broken some records during that time, but you definitely have some people that sit that period out. So for that very reason, we are already very much working in and around the holidays. Now you made a reference to Halloween, in my opinion, from a real estate perspective, therefore it is an authoritative opinion. We've been doing this for 20 plus years. The, the holidays actually do start with Halloween, not Thanksgiving. Uh, and there's many other ho holidays in there, New Year's, you know, Kwanzaa and um, Hanukkah and many, many others. So lots of things get celebrated between the end of October and early January. And from a real estate perspective, they all matter. They all change the mindset of the consumer, the buyer and the seller. Therefore, if you want to buy or sell before, quote unquote, the holidays, we're in it. We are in it now. We could get you on the market and sold before Thanksgiving almost for sure. I mean, we guarantee to sell your home over the average price and under the average time. And the average time is getting close to Thanksgiving right now. So, Give us a call, 214-310-0008, or go online to... DutchReminiTeam.com. Like my son says. So, make sure you let us know now. I'm, I'm not joking. Don't hesitate right now. If you would like to get bought or sold before the holidays, right now, call 214-310-0008. Or, like my daughter says... Google Todd Trumani and check out over 700 five-star reviews. She nailed that one. All right. Phoenix, the intern. This is a segment we are affectionately now calling Questions from the Intern. What questions do you have about the real estates? Get close to that mic. Do you anticipate DFW ever moving toward rent control if there's a scarcity of houses and apartments in the area? Would you like a simple answer or... A political answer. I'll take any. No, that's the simple answer. The political answer is it has already been discussed and there are lots of people that would like to see that happen. If it were to ever happen, it would probably happen in Dallas County. Uh, I don't foresee that happening in Tarrant or Collin County or other surrounding counties in my lifetime. Dallas County would be the one where the actual makeup of the pop of the property type and density and population and political demands would be most likely for that to happen. I don't want to have an overly political conversation here because I don't know, but the answer is no, I do not expect that happening in my lifetime, probably not even in your lifetime, but it has already been discussed. Um, we have enough land. We have enough opportunity. We have a vibrant enough economy that people, in my opinion, let's switch to my opinion now. It's a professional opinion. It's an experienced opinion, but it is mine. Uh, people need to drop the entitlement that says, I should be able to live where I want to live, how I want to live, at the price I want to live there. Sorry, 
That's just not how life works. Now, there are places where it's like, this is an island and you can't, this doesn't work if you can't live here for a certain price. Now, I would, I'm personally not for rent control of any kind whatsoever. I respect other people that are, and I understand their reasons, but we are not, we don't have any of the legitimate restraints that some of those places where that has happened do, but I don't support it in those areas either myself. So I'm not angry at anyone that does, and I'm not unwilling to work within those constraints, but I do not think that will happen here. Therefore, the what the heck do I do with that answer is people need to compromise, right? So I will live a little further out. I'll live someplace smaller. I will live with my parents. I'll live with my children. I'll live with a roommate, whatever that looks like. That's how these things work all over the world, all over this country. And I think where we live, that is the much more likely outcome. We are already seeing an uptick. Now we're talking about like from a fraction of a percentage to a larger fraction of a percentage of multi-generational housing where you have two or three generations in one large, beautiful home, and it's more cost-effective. We are seeing um, seasonally, cyclically um, movement to the outer lying areas. I mean, lots of people didn't even know where Farmersville or Nevada or Weatherford, you know, or Justin and Melissa were six, seven, eight years ago. And now those are all really cool places to live with lots of awesome things happening there. Um, so that's my answer to your question about would there be any legal governmental political control of rents so that people can live in certain places at certain prices? That's the short and the long answer. How do you feel about that? I feel good about it. All right. Full price, Courtney. Do we give them one more? What do you think? We give them one more. Okay. How long should your house be on the market before you settle for a lower price or something that's not ideal? Or is there ever a time to do that? Great question. Love the way you said it. Uh, if you're working with the Todd Tremonti Home Selling Team, our unbelievable significant effort is for you to never have to do that. It does not mean there are not rare scenarios where life, market, politics, interest rates, neighbors, whatever dictate that you should need to do that. That number changes. And so it's a floating number of when have we moved from that initial marketing phase to where the goal outcome did not happen the way it was originally uh, you developed, planned, hoped for. And now based on data and conversations and marketplace, we need to make an adjustment. At the moment in this market, that adjustment period is probably after 30 days. It might be more like 45 days actually, um, but there have been other markets where that would have been like 10 days in. And I have certainly worked in, I've been doing this 20 plus years. I've worked in buyer's markets where there's ex the massive inventory uh, and few buyers to find. Uh, and that might've been 120 days in. So that's a floating number, but basically it is when you have passed that initial marketing phase and you have not achieved your desired outcome that was reasonable to expect now, the feedback from the marketplace tells us we need to shift our expectations, change our marketing. It's not always reduce price. It might be offer some incentives like we talked about before. It might be adjust your marketing. It might be adjust your target audience, but it also might be adjust your expectations of price and sales number. Did that answer your question? Yes, it did. All right, folks, that was a little segment we like to call <laughs> questions from the intern. First time we ever did that one. All right, producer Courtney, the full price. What have you got on your little list of how we run the show? Well, I um, am wondering for our listeners what the silver lining is for homes on land. Like is the dream of having a home on land gone for most people? Will the market be better in the future for homes on land? Great question. Let's do one of those good old fashioned radio teases where we will answer that right after you tell people where to find us if they miss this show live. You can find us wherever you listen to podcasts. We're on Apple Podcasts, we're on Spotify, and any other avenue that you are- We're on the Amazon? Picking them up. Yeah, sure. Amazon, you can find us on Amazon I, Music. I don't know how to find Amazon Music, but if that is your jam, God, find us you're there. You're like an Apple loyalist. Honestly. She came to work here, I immediately had to buy her an, a Mac I mean, or an I don't Apple. know what to tell you. I was bitter about it. 
costs five times more than everyone else's laptop. All right. While we're telling you about things, keenlandscaping.com. My boy Alan over there met me at my house this week so we could get a couple things dialed in. They met me at my house last week. Oh my God. Guys, they are experts and I am telling you now is the moment it is the moment to get your landscaping. Tell them why. Tell that, them why, because we agree on this. Yeah, we you want to get stuff planted and rooted and established before we head into winter and the, and to the freeze, and then it's going to like pop up and be ready in the yeah. spring. Because if you wait too late, next summer will will kill. It'll everything. be here. But my, my my that's my reason number two. My reason number one is because I love to be outside in the fall. Oh yeah. And if you want to enjoy pretty things outside. Fall is your moment. Spring's great, but in spring, to the point you just made, things are just coming back from dormancy all winter, and they may, really might not look great until early summer. So we get this resurgence where things like just freeze, and I mean, not freeze, but like halt midsummer because it's so hot. And then the things that survive start looking great again right now, early fall. And you can enjoy being outside where it's like 70 something or even 60s morning and afternoons and things start looking pretty. You get the second bloom from a lot of things. So keenlandscaping.com. Keen landscaping is K-E-A-N-E. Keenlandscaping.com. Ask for my buddy, Alan. Okay. Now I will answer your question. Would you like to rephrase it? What is the silver lining for people looking for homes on land? Like, is this even still possible? Okay. So here's the deal. It is still possible to own a home on land in DFW, but it is not as possible as it once was. And I believe it will be less possible next year than this and the following year than that. What I mean by that is if part of your dream is to own a home on one or two or three or four acres or five, you know, the point is on a giant lot, not a farm, not a ranch, but also not a neighborhood lot, something in between, I would not be waiting we spent the whole first half of the show talking about how just the cost of home ownership in Texas, North Texas is growing. It is catching up to California, New York, parts of Florida, where I think for the forever future, home ownership, real estate investment, land ownership is just going to cost a larger chunk of people's, the average person's income. I don't think that's going to change in my lifetime. We're building you know, our business and our models around helping people navigate that in ways that are best for their family. So if your dream, if your goal, if your need, if your want is to own a home on a really big lot on, a, on acreage, I think if you can do that now, you should do that now. Now, later you might want to add the shop, add onto the house, add the well, add the pond, add the basketball court, you know, add the fencing and all the bells and whistles. But I would not I would not keep waiting unless you have the ability financially to increase your financial resources faster than the increased in the cost of that property stuff property type, which I believe is slower now than it will be in the future. I think we're in a moment where values are still growing, but the pace of growth has slowed a bit, and this is actually a window of opportunity. And although interest rates are not fun they're actually helping slow that pace of growth. So if you wanna buy a home on land, you have not missed that opportunity forever, but that opportunity is running away from some people as the value of land in North Texas goes up, 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 even in a high interest rate environment. And the value, the cost of construction has continued to go up. So that's what you're buying when you buy a home on land. The, the home is the construction, it's the material, it's the improvement, and the land is the dirt that that sits on. However much land you're, you're talking about, one, two, five, 10 acres. So those are the key factors. Now guess what else is going up? Insurance and taxes and utilities and all the aspects of all home ownership, which tend to be a little bit more when you have more land and more home. So if we can help you, if you want to, if you wanna begin the conversation around buying or selling or owning a home or two on land, let's talk now. Let's not wait. You don't have to buy or sell now, but let's start the conversation right now. Give us a call, 214-310-0008 or text us at 214-310-0008. You can always go online to the website. Touchermightyteam.com. And don't forget. Find out what your home would sell for right now and under a minute at Touchermightyteam.com. They're very cute.
They really are. Are very cute. <clears throat> Even the way they talk. Um. Okay. I'm also curious what you are thinking about slash reading. You told me that you had you were saving it as a surprise. That's right. I would not even tell you before the show what I'm currently reading. Sorry. I am reading a book called The Gap and the Gain, and it's actually by a guy named Dan Sullivan. It's technically written by a, a, a doctor buddy of his name, Benjamin something. Um, this is a book that I need so bad. You want to counsel me publicly right here in front of all these people, Courtney? You can be my counselor. I live in a dangerous gap all the time. And the book is about the gap. It is the gap between where I am now and where my goals are, my ideal view of my life and the outcome. And I've been called a dreamer and I've been called an achiever and all those things most business owners and leaders people are. And I'm not claiming any brilliance. I'm just saying that's how I'm wired. And so I have a hard time being satisfied with the current accomplishment or the current level of whatever. And I have a really hard time celebrating my wins for more than 30 seconds. Now I've gotten better at that over the years, but we're talking like one or 2% improvement where it, I, I am the problem. I can be a burden on others in that I'm like, okay, that was great. But now what's next? What's next? What's next? Instead of being like, Hey, look where we are compared to where we were a year ago. Look how much impact we just had that we weren't having before. I love it. I just always want to push for more and I'm wired that way. It's not like I necessarily want to be that way. I am that way. And I tend to be glad that I'm that way because it's produced a lot of good things, but I spend very little time in the gain, which is the principle in the book of looking back, measuring back, look how much we've gained, look how much we've grown, look how much we've done. Look, look at the impact we've had, look how obedient, obedient we've been. I tend to spend way too much time in the gap between where I am and where I want to be, what I'm achieving and the gap between what I'm achieving and what I believe I'm capable of or the full vision versus the part of the vision we've achieved. Um, I told my wife the other day, here's this book I'm reading. I know I need to grow in this. And she was like, Oh my yes. Right. I told the guys that I'm in community with that sharpened me and encouraged me. Hey, I'm reading this. I'm working on this. Hold me accountable to this. And they're like, great. Let us know when you're finished. Right. Um, but what I'm realizing, and then I'll move on no, is, don't is move on. the burden that that puts on others and the way I'm leading and parenting my kiddos between their full capability, between what they say they want and then what, you know, and sometimes the twisted part of my brain would say where they come up short when in reality, it's just where they are right now. So, you know, I'm not like a tyrant, but there are times where I'm like, Hey, we could keep going. You could get here. You could get here. And I needed to stop and be like, wow, look how far you've come. Look what you've done. So I want to be better at that. It's so funny that you say that because yesterday was my year anniversary working with you. It was, we had tacos. We had tacos. It was a big moment. And even last week, my therapist was like, I just want to stop and like, we need to acknowledge how far you've come. And like, the, crowd, the crowd goes wild. Crowd goes wild. Well, it's huge because you can just keep pushing and you can just keep striving and wanting and we, you really do make progress. Yeah. If you state a desired outcome, it's almost impossible to not make progress. Now, it is highly likely you will make little to no progress if you don't even have a stated desire or goal, which is why goal setting is important because you can set bad goals and you'll probably make some progress just by like making yourself aware of a stated outcome. You like, you'll make some subconscious, you'll make some little bitty tiny incremental conscious decisions to move towards that. You know, like I want a boyfriend, like you're likely to, to be slightly more available to that. You know, I want to grow my lawn mowing business, which by the way, if you're in the Richardson area and you want your yard mowed, you we know, know who to call producer Phoenix is on top of that. Um, uh, that one's free. The next one's going to be expensive. Um, the, but just stating it will help you move towards it. Good or bad, by the way. Um, but stating it and thoughtfully discerning and critically thinking through, this is the life I want to live. That's the home I want to have. We want to live on land. We want to sell before the holidays being clear on it, really wanting it, having some emotional drive behind it, it's almost certain to happen if you make effort. 
The question then is, can you be happy with the progress and not only the perfect outcome? And the, the, one of the huge takeaways from that book is even if you believe that you would only be happy with the perfect outcome, you're lying to yourself because you can achieve the perfect outcome. And that type of thinking will immediately think what? Now what? Never, yeah. What's Never next? Okay, I did it. But I did it. it. No, no, I actually achieved the perfect outcome. I exceeded what I ever thought was possible. Now what? what's next? My Never wiring now is like, okay, cool. And what's next? It's not to go, let's spend a week unpacking how far we came and what we did and encouraging each other and sharpening. That's just, those are counterintuitive inst instincts. And in me, there's been a lot of good things that have come from that drive, but I'm realizing some of the harm I can be doing and some of what I'm missing out on by not being like, let's just talk about what's happened and where we've come and how we've grown and how beautiful and wonderful and fun and that is. So that's a book. That's my takeaway. That's my encouragement to people. If your thing, if your ideal outcome is buying a home, selling a home, moving on to some land, building, give us a call. Let us help you discern the wisdom in that, the timing of that, the financial impact of that. And if you're ready to move forward, great. If you're not, that's great too. We'll be here whenever the time is right. You can find us online at touchreminderteam.com. You can also find out what your home would sell for right now and under a minute at touchreminderteam.com. Or Google Todd Trimani and check out over 700 five-star reviews. And if you happen to miss any part of the show, find the podcast wherever you listen to podcasts. DFW Real Estate Weekly with Todd Tremonti and Full Price Courtney and the English Wonder himself. And don't you dare forget the Phoenix, the intern. Next week, same time, same place, we'll be talking about right choices and things to avoid in the DFW real estate market.